Hey guys, here's a new follow-up video on the, the Better Roofs and Levels modules. A lot of development has gone into it just in the last three weeks since you saw my last video, so I thought I'd catch you up on what's possible now. Um, I am walking through this ship. This is one of my ships. This is the Galleon, and it's completely redone in a using the new Levels and Better Roofs modules. And you see a bunch of stuff going on here that's probably new since the last one you saw. And I'm going to walk you through how I created this. And then we're going to walk through strategies for troubleshooting your maps in case you want to make something this complex. There's, uh, you really need to understand how to manipulate polygons and how to essentially set up your maps to be able to do this kind of thing. You can see I'm jumping down through holes. I'm uh, navigating multiple levels of this, of this ship. And to make all of this work in a way that also lets you do combat across this entire map, you notice I have players inside of rooms and players outside of rooms. Um, if I'm standing out here, um, there's, there's a bunch of players on this map that I can see and I can target. You know, here's a player over here that's at a different elevation. They're at 20 feet. This one's at 10. This one's at essentially zero feet. So I'm going to walk you through how to do this so that you can do combat and uh, make it so everything is seamless and, can, you know, you can have players on, on the crow's nest that can see each other and how all of this stuff works. So let's uh, let's jump into this and we're going to, essentially going to create this ship um, in the process. So I've redesigned this or I've added to the, the diagram that you saw last time just to walk you through some of the changes. First of all, uh, I've introduced holes in the diagram, which just explains how a hole works. It starts at one level and then it cuts through any tiles above it in terms of showing any tokens. So a token at this level would see a token standing here in this hole looking down and it would cut through these other tiles to make sure that that token wasn't hidden and that token would be slightly hidden or occluded uh, around that hole as well. Also talk about elevators, how elevators can span multiple levels and they use a specific naming convention. So you can name the levels and I'll show, we'll create an elevator. I'll give you examples of those. You don't have to just name them basement and you could give them instructions or, you know, maybe what happens. So you can get really creative with how you do those. We also have um, the inside of the UI. Uh, we'll talk about this, this tree mode, which is really just placing a normal foundry overhead tile inside of a level. And that lets you do things like putting those walls in that you can crouch under if there's a wall that is like higher than anything else. It also lets you put things like chandeliers uh, or other overhead effects within a level in case you want to get fancy and do that. I also introduced basements. Basements just go into the negative. So I just gave an example of a basement and how you would end up building those. There's some settings specifically for basements if you want to get into building basements in more complex uh, setups like that. And also I eliminated that this was a background tile. Really, if you just make everything a foreground tile when you're building, it'll all work and render generally properly. You can have your very bottom most tile be a, a floor tile, but if you have a basement um, and you want that to like not hide and stuff like that, it's just generally better if you're working with levels to make everything a foreground tile and you'll have more control over what renders properly and where. And that's all the major changes. We'll get into some of the specifics here now. Let's go through the new settings first. We'll go into mod modular settings. Uh, nothing different on better roofs, but if we go to levels, well, let's walk through these. So change token size based on elevation. So if you have this checked on, tokens will automatically change their size um, based, uh, based on where they are. So, and it's something that's from the perspective of the player. So if I change my settings here and notice this player is now 20 feet up and this player looks like they're on the ground. So their, their token is smaller. Likewise, if I select this player, then the relative player to their position will be smaller as well. You may see this change. I've been talking to the developer about making it so this player, even though they're higher up, wouldn't look smaller, but just keep an eye on this. It does, it does create a good effect when you're up high looking down. I think it works well. Another setting is advanced fog of war. 
So hiding unexplored floors from the explored fog of war. So if you have players walking into the first floor and you don't want them to necessarily see everything on the second floor until they've explored it, this makes sure that it hides that next floor from exploration until they've actually explored it. Um, and there's a setting where you can manually uh, make a tile not follow this behavior if you want to. What it essentially does is it takes the, the, the tile that has been explored and it creates a, a black copy of it that is overlaid on top of it. And so if you don't want that particular effect situationally, you can remove it. Lock elevation lets you, uh, you know, if you don't do, if you don't do that, these players can change their own elevation and they can just jump up to another floor. So you can uh, turn this on and what it does is it will immediately without a refresh, it'll make it so your players don't get access to this HUD option. Now, if, you want to toggle that on and off. There is a macro inside of the levels macro compendium where you can toggle that function all and on and off. So you can let your players uh, change their, their elevations normally, but for a particular map that might be a multi-level map, you can turn it off uh, for that particular map. Default token height. This affects line of sight. So if you have a player that's six feet up and there's a wall that's three feet in front of them, they'll be able to see over that wall and see another player. Um, it calculates if these players are on two different levels, maybe this player's 30 feet up, it'll calculate from where this player's eyes are to where this player is. Um, so it matters the token height and you can have a default to six for every single token. And then you can just change that default token by token. Um, you also have automatic token height, which I suggest leaving it off because it could be problematic, but it, what it does is it looks at the size of your token, the scale, and it, and it looks at the square that they're standing in. So if this is a five foot by five foot square and the player is exactly in one square, then it will call them five feet. If the player is uh, taking up, you know, if they're taking up double the squares, it'll call them 10 feet. Why that can be a problem is because a very tall player could potentially, if they're standing on level one, they could see level two just standing there. So I would recommend toggling it off, but you may want to experiment with it situationally to see if it helps. And uh, experimental precise light occlusion. So this can have a performance impact. This is a global setting, so it's not something you can just set player by player. So you can experiment whether you want to use this or not, but this helps in more advanced maps where you have lighting shining from down below um, like, for example, I'll show you in some of my ship prefabs. Those are very complex, and you can be looking down into a hold, and if you don't have this turned on, you can get some strange lighting artifacts and halo effects. So you can experiment whether you have this on or off. I'm going to leave it on uh, for my purposes because it, so far it seems like the performance impact is relatively negligible, but I haven't tested extensively on lower-end machines, so keep that in mind. And then the last one, and this is very important when you're designing, is enabling your ray visualization. And if I enable that and I select a token, it will show me all the other tokens in the scene. This is a control token. There's another regular token over here. And it'll tell me if I have line of sight to that person. It does it in three dimensions. So this person may be on the third floor. They may be standing way up here. And this will tell me that I can see that token from here. Whereas this token, I've got walls and other things blocking them. This token I can see. This is helpful so that when you are actually looking at your, your scene, you can tell if you have everything set up the right way. It's possible that I'll have a green line to this token here, but I won't see him. And the reason that is, is because often it's that the tile that he's standing on or under is covering him up. So even though this is saying, look, you can technically see him, I may see, I may not see the token there. And that'll tell me that I've got a problem with my, with my tile and probably with my polygon. And so then I can go into the polygon and I can uh, determine if it's, if it's functioning properly. You can see this one's got issues with it. You can see this one's got issues with it. And it'll help me sort of uh, set up my, my scenes for actual combat. Remember, you can walk a token through the scene and it may look just fine. But when you start putting multiple tokens on multiple levels, it'll expose where your polygons have issues and where you have to spend more time coding things the right way. The last thing I'll show you as far as what's new before we jump into actual tutorial stuff and how to build, just walk through what's new inside the tile config. So we're in the overhead tab for a tile config. 
um, all of these options are the same that you saw before, but now you have these options to define a polygon. I'm going to show you examples of that, but essentially lets you select the walls that will make the polygon more clear and more defined for the levels module. It's really important that you get those right because it's those walls and the polygon that they define that define the three-dimensional space. And it's by defining the three-dimensional space that you can hide and unhide tokens properly as you navigate around and do battles and things like that. You still have the same height and top and bottom. Uh, you have this option to show even when below. You would use that in situations where, and I'll show you when we do the hold, where maybe you want to show the level above. Um, you can use it like in the barn that you saw before. It'll just make the tile above actually show to the, the players below. Max elevation, you only use this when you have this selected. I think by the time you even see this, this may be something that you can only manipulate when this is, is checked on. But when you check this on, it basically says, look, I want a player to be able to see, maybe they're at level zero, and I want them to see this tile at level 10. But I don't want them to see that tile if they're 20 feet below. So this basically just says, like, look, I want them to see it, but only if it's 10 feet above their head. If it's 20 feet above their head, it'll disappear, that sort of thing. But if it's within 10 feet, I want them to be able to see it. So that's what you use that this field for. It only works with this toggle. Is a basement. So that comes into play when you have a basement that should be invisible unless you're standing in it. You guys saw me do a basement with this particular map. You saw me do a basement here. And there was no problems. I have this basement, I'm down below, and I come up above and I don't see the basement. The reason is, is because the basement's entirely covered by this floor below me. Well, what if that wasn't entirely covered by this floor? What if it was a, a room below that I really shouldn't see unless I'm standing in it? Well, that's what that basement setting does. You can say is basement, it'll make sure that it's always hidden when it's below your feet. And then the last one, don't hide this tile in the fog. If you as, as you remember, there's some advanced fog functionality that will cover a tile in a black version of itself. If you don't want that to have happen, you can make that tile never do that by saying, you know, don't hide it in the fog. Let's start by how I set up the levels of the scene. I am going from the bilge, which is the lowest level, all the way up to the captain's deck, which is at the top level. I do have some things sitting on some other levels, but these are the ones that I'm going to use in my UI to sort of navigate up and down in, uh, in this map. Right now I'm at the bilge level, and what I did was dropped in a tile at this level. If we open up the tile config, we can see that it's set to hide and fade like you saw in the diagram, and then it's going from negative 30 at the bottom up to negative 21 at the top, and everything else I left as default. You'll also notice I don't have a polygon defined because in this level, the walls are very, very clear and it's easy for levels to sort of pick up the polygon and tell what it should have done. I also have a couple of staircases. In this case, defined, it's defined as a stair, and at the same level, I just dropped those, I drew those directly on here while I had my UI open and put everything in the right spot. So this level is pretty easy, and we'll go up now to the lower deck. Lower deck's gonna be a little bit more complicated. There's a lot more interior walls, a lot harder for you know, for the, the module to tell what the outside is. So we're going to we're gonna try to define the polygon here, and we'll see how we do. You'll notice the everything else is the same as level before. It's set to hide and fade. This is a single tile, and uh, and it's, it's now at the elevations for this level. So if we click into our wall tool, and we select these walls, I'll fast forward this part for you. Now that I've got all of my walls selected, if I say define polygon, give it a second to do the work, it'll put all of the wall IDs into the selected walls. And if I click update tile, go back to my tile to unpick it, you can see now I have a very clear polygon. This is going to help make sure that any tokens on this level are seen properly at this level, level above it, level below it, to the degree that I've enabled those things. But, and that's fine, if I'm just building a single scene, I can leave these, these wall IDs in here. The other thing that it's doing is it's taking these walls that it looked at, and I'll just open one of them up for you. 
and it's ticking this box, is external wall. So the way that the logic works for the module is if you have nothing in here at all, it'll just try to figure out what the polygon is around it by looking at the walls that are at its level. Uh, if you have defined the walls, it'll look at these first and it'll say, okay, I see all of these walls that makes up the polygons, so therefore that's going to be my polygon. However, if this is a prefab, these walls will change. These IDs, every time you drop the prefab into a new scene, these IDs will change. So these won't even really matter. You can leave them in here. Or what I just do is say prefab. All that does is just says, okay, look, there are walls defined. You know it because there's something in this field, but since it can't find the actual IDs, it'll then look at the wall config and it'll see if this is checked off. So it'll look for any walls that are within its range where the ex is external wall is checked and it'll use that to define the polygon. So if I click update tile, now that I've deleted my IDs, all it says is prefab. Again, if it's just blank, it won't do anything at all. It won't know to look for anything. It'll just try to use its normal logic. So I'll just put in something like prefab here. I'll update my tile. Click on it again, and it still sees my walls that I've defined, because this time, instead of using the wall IDs themselves, it's looking for that ticked off box saying that those are, um, those are external walls. Other things on this level is I've got a whole defined. I've actually got a couple of things here in this middle section. In this case, on this level, I've got a single hole defined. It's called a hole. Oh, it's going from negative 12 to negative 9, which means it's just cutting through the negative 10 level, which is the, it's the level of the gun deck that's sitting above this level. It's just cutting through that. So as long as your hole is just cutting through the tiles that you want, it's fine. I could also set this to, you know, negative 20, which is the, the level of this um, hold up to, you know, negative one, which is the top of that other one. But in this case, I'm just defining the hole to cut through that one tile. So you have some flexibility in terms of how that works. What it'll do is it'll make any players down here. Oops, I need to put this one at the right level. So this player who might be sitting over here if we copy him, put another player here. And if I go down to my gun deck, I can see that player there. This one, the other one's hidden until I have line of sight to them. But the hole essentially just cuts out a space that these, these players will then be visible through um, by players above them. And if I select this player, I can see the player above me. I can't see the floor underneath him because that's above me and it's hidden, but I can see that the player's above me. And as long as he's in line of sight, I can target him. Okay, this level's a little bit more complicated. This is a single tile with the hole. This is actually a transparent hole cut out in the middle of it. So let's look at how this tile is defined. You can see it's got a, a well-defined polygon, so there's nothing that we actually have to do here. Interestingly, my walls are not all connected. These windows are actually wide open, and so the module is smart enough to be able to go from this wall to this wall and know that those connect together. So you actually have two drawings here. This one is visible from this level as well. This is the hole that I defined down below. It goes from 9 to 12, so it cuts through and just make sure that this um, everything below can be seen from up above through this essentially this little window, uh, which is what the hole defines. But the other one I have set up is actually set up as an elevator. And in this case, I said I only want it to go one direction. So normally for an elevator, you might have something like negative 20, and I, that might be named like bilge, and then I might have negative 10, and this might be named gun deck. And if I update that, if I walk into it, I have drop down or gun deck. In this case, I want this elevator only to go one direction. So I left out the other option. So I can either cancel out or I can just drop down. I could have named this something else, but I wanted this to be more of a command, like what would happen if I click on that. So if I leave that the way it is, 
and a player steps on it, they have the option now to drop down into the hold through this, but they can't go back up again. It's a, it's a one-way elevator because I left the other option out to go back the other direction. So let's go up there and let's look at some more advanced features for getting combat to work. So I've got a few tokens that are defined at this level. I've got one that's sitting in the crow's nest. I've actually got two, one in each crow's nest. I've got one sitting essentially what is ground level. So this is the very base level of the top deck. But then you can go up above the map room and up above the mess hall and get to this next level, which is about 10 feet up. And then you've got a third level, which is above the captain's quarters. And that is here. Let me show you what the tiles look like at these levels. So I'll go to my tile picker, go up to my main deck. My main deck is this main tile here, and that's it. It's got um, the interiors of the above deck cabins, and that's essentially what it is. So let's look at what's behind it. So my Roof mode is set to hide. Actually, I'm probably going to change this to show through fog. And otherwise, I've got it set from 0 to 9, and fade and everything else is sort of the same. And then I don't want to hide this tile in the fog. So I don't want to ever have a blackened section of the tile. I'm just going to have it always show through. So I'm going to update it that way. And let's look at the walls that are defining this. So even though this wall, if you notice it, is it does it's not doing anything it's not restricting movement or sight or sound i did i did put a wall there so it could help the module figure out that this is the perimeter of this particular uh tile and so by doing that the module I, I give it you know a con one contiguous step all the way around and you can see that everything looks like it should look my walls at this level are all set up at the same height and everything should make sense these walls notice these are not walls these are just to block like being able to walk over the furniture maybe you want people to walk over it but these are just from zero to seven i didn't want these walls to confuse the module so i put them at a lower level these walls i left at nine uh, this one for example i left at seven you may find out if you get weird looking polygons that if you put some of your interior walls at, a, at anything below level nine that then the module will ignore them and make sure it doesn't count them if i go up to the captain's level i've got some more uh, tiles that i've created this tile is essentially just a roof and it goes above the map room this tile is the same thing it's actually this is weird and i don't recommend this but this is a tile that's functioning as a roof and a floor it's it's the entire tile is a roof to the mess hall. But in this case, just this piece is really technically a roof. And then this side is really technically a floor to the captain's room. So by doing this and by not splitting into two tiles, I've created some complexities that may or may not work for you. And I'll show you some of the workarounds I do to make, make combat work. But in this case, this tile is going from level 10 to infinity. So I'm treating it really fundamentally as a roof. And this one, is 10 to infinity as well. So I'm also treating this tile as a roof as well. I place these tiles as a roof. So if I go down to my main deck, you can see if I turn on my roof mode, those tiles appear because these tiles are technically roofs to the main deck uh, or they're, if I'm at the captain's deck, they're sitting at the level below. That's why you can see them on both levels depending on what you've got toggled on or off. Now, let's say that I want to put a chandelier in here. I'm going to turn on, so I've got my main deck highlighted. I'm going to turn on this mode. I'm going to open up my tile picker. And I'll pick this chandelier. So you notice it put it at the right level, zero to nine, and then it made it foundry default and fade. And I'm gonna have that slightly fade when I walk underneath it. Now I'm walking in my cabin. 
uh, my mess hall and the chandelier fades above me. You can do the same with walls that you want to hide under, that sort of thing. That's how you uh, put overhead tiles with, within a level. So let's look at how I define the polygon here. This one is really messed up. Why is that? Well, because I'm trying to treat this as both a floor and a ceiling. I've got it set to show through the fog because I want it to function more like a, a roof set to fade and it goes from 10 to infinity because I, again, I want it to function more like a roof. I also don't want to hide this tile inside fog. So I'm just going to delete, uh, tick that off as well. And that's going to make this polygon function strangely and it'll probably break things unless I do some workarounds. Likewise, if I go to my roof level of this level, now I can see how this polygon is defined. Now this one is set 20 to infinity and it's set to hide on vision. So I probably want to do show through the fog, have it fade, and I don't want to hide this one as, as well. In this case, I'm gonna try to define a polygon. So I'm gonna turn on my wall tool. You notice already I've got a little gap here, so I'm just going to put a, I'm at my captain's deck at 10 to 19 is where I want everything set. I'm just going to draw a little window there. Now I'm going to select all of my roofs at this level, or all of my walls at this level. Okay, I've got all of my walls that should define the polygon here. So I'm going to click define polygon. It's going to give me all of my wall codes. If I click on that, you can see I now have a nice clean polygon. So that will function more predictably when I'm doing battles over it. However, I know I want to make this a prefab. So I'm going to erase those, replace it with the word prefab, and click update tile. If I click on those again, I still see polygon is set correctly. If I look at the walls that I just laid down, you'll notice they're now flagged as external walls. So that will help in my, with my prefab to make sure that these walls are still discovered and respected when I lay this prefab down again in another scene. We'll look at a few more things here. These sails are also, these are at level 30 and up. I'm treating them as uh, roofs. So I'm going to show them through the fog. I'm going to fade them. And then you'll notice that they have little walls around them that those are being defined by these um, these polygon walls that are sitting around them. I have these walls just restricting movement, otherwise sight and sound I have none. One trick I will point out is Foundry will default walls to unblocking um, sound. I've noticed that those will also block line of sight. I think it's a Foundry bug. So if you have some problems with walls blocking line of sight and they're invisible walls, try changing their sound so that it sounds not being blocked and you might find you get the right behavior. Okay, so now let's experiment with putting some, uh, some players into our map and seeing if everything works properly. So here this player can see both players up on the uh, crow's nest so I can target them that way. This player can target that player down there. Let's put this player up above. This player can see these players. Let's turn on our line of sight debug just to show you what that looks like. Now I can see any other tokens that I have line of sight to, which ones I can see and which ones I can't see. Notice this one is hiding underneath the sail. That's why I couldn't see him from over here, but technically I can see that guy. There you go, he's now outside, out, out from underneath that sail. Now I wanna see, can I see everyone that I need to see here? Notice right out of the gate that I'm, I'm not looking, this is probably not right. This should be a tile. This should be the roof of this and not, not what I'm seeing here. So I'm going to go in and see if I can change that. I have it set to roof. 
Let's just try changing this to hide and seeing if this gives me the effect that I want. Okay, so there you go. In this case, I could change it to hide, and it makes it so that roof now appears underneath the foot of this player. Notice I've got um, stairs set up at all of these, so I have line of sight to this guy, but if I move under this wall, notice I can't see him anymore because we don't have line of sight to each other. Likewise, he can't see me because of the height difference. So he'd have to like move into another location for me to be visible. So there, now I can see this guy. Some other things that I did to make all this work, there's a, there's a hole here. And this hole, this hole is set from zero to infinity. And let me take it away and show you what happens. So now I took that hole away. And now I can't see the players that I used to see before. Because this deck is only defined from zero to nine. If I tried to set it as a zero to infinity, I'll get other behavior. So if I set it from zero to nine, and I don't have a hole, then I have trouble seeing tokens on other levels. But if I have a hole there, it's kind of an easy hack just to make sure that every token on this level is visible to tokens on levels above it. So now you can see, I can see all of my other tokens. So I can now have combat work properly on this map. You'll find that putting holes in places will help you make multi-level maps like this work better. You also want to test players outside of the range entirely just to see can I have combat with combatants that are in the water, for example. So just kind of put different characters at different elevations around your map. Let's drop this guy to, uh, let's drop him to negative 10. You can see I can st I still have line of sight to many of my players. I don't have line of sight to that one. Here I'm at negative 30. So these walls are blocking my sight. Maybe I'm in the water here. Or I'm at negative 20, sorry. But I have very few players that I can see from way down here. I can see the players that are still in the water. But if I move out far enough, I start to be able to technically be able to see these players. Of course, I can't see up over the side. So while they can see me, it's very hard for me to see them. But this just lets you as the GM sort of figure out how your combat might take place and just make sure that you're designing your levels to accommodate different combat scenarios that you might be facing. But this is great. I'm here at sort of level zero and I can see 20 levels below. I can see 30 levels above. You can see how small this player looks, the player in the crow's nest. I mean, they're absolutely tiny. Um, and you can turn that setting off, of course, if you want to. But this is a little bit how you design your maps. And hopefully this gave you some tips and techniques to be able to troubleshoot your polygons. Because remember, even if you make a, a run through a map as one player, as a single player, everything may look right. But until you add more players uh, to your map, you won't really know if you've actually designed your map properly. And usually if you have problems seeing them, it's because of polygon issues and you have to do some work on, on defining your polygons better. Once you define your polygons, see like I'm looking out this window and I can target players and enemies down here. Once you define your polygons, it lets you do things like this properly so that the module levels modular knows what to hide and what to show. So uh, let me know in the comments if this was helpful to you guys. And if you enjoy the, the new features from the, from the levels developer, and by all means, um, go support him on Patreon. He's extremely productive in making really advanced stuff like what you saw here. He's got even more than this available and uh, definitely want to see um, developers like Ripper get supported by, by the community. So otherwise, let me know in the comments if you guys have questions and, uh, and otherwise have fun making your maps.